I'm Jean Hirons. I'm a pastel artist and instructor. I've been working in pastel for over 26 years, and it's my pleasure today to do a pastel demonstration for you. I want to thank Stuart Rosenthal of the Beacon Newspapers and Stacy Slayton and Britt Conley of Nova Alexandria Campus for inviting me to do this demo and for allowing me to do the same demo for both of you. That's a big help. So, um, I'm in my home studio today. This is where I have been since last March uh, due to the pandemic. I also have a public studio where I normally teach up on Wilkins Avenue in Rockville, but and I'm living in Rockville. Um, so I've been giving Zoom classes three days a week, and it's been a lot of fun. And we've been doing a lot of still life this fall. I'm actually a landscape painter. My focus is on buildings in the landscape. I've painted a lot of uh, views around the city, and I do some rural scenes. And I'm from New England, so I do some water scenes. But we've been doing land, uh, still life, and it's been really fun. So that's what I'm going to do for you today, is a still life. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about pastel. Maybe some of you went to the National Gallery a year ago and saw the pastel exhibit at the National Gallery. It was wonderful. Um, and if you did, you will have seen 500-year-old portraits in pastel that are just beautiful. Just look as they did when they were painted. And that's the thing about pastel. It's an old medium, and it is an enduring medium. Pastel is not the same as oil pastel, a completely different thing. Sometimes we call it soft pastel or chalk pastel to differentiate between oil pastel. That's a much newer medium, and you can't mix the two. They're completely different. So what is pastel? Pastel is um, it's just it's pure pigment with a binder, okay, with a binder. And the more binder there is, the harder the pastel. So we have we have very hard pastel sticks like this new pastel. You know, these are very hard, very popular. Uh, and that's what I've used to start my little underpainting here, which I'll be telling you about. And then we have some intermediate pastels like Rembrandt's and Giro, which is what, one of my favorite pastels. And then we have a whole lot of very soft pastels, from, from the sort of soft to the very soft. And those include lots of brands. And there's been more and more brands coming out. Pastel has become a really popular medium over the past 25 years from modern painting. We even have a biennial convention now in Albuquerque. So we have lots of different pastels. And I'm going to show you a picture of my setup here and maybe the one in the other studio as I'm talking. But also surfaces. Surfaces are really important. You can use cheap pastels on a good surface and do a good painting. I don't advise it, but nevertheless, I really discourage my students from using the cheaper pastel papers that you can buy in pads at the uh, local art stores like Strathmore and Kansan. They're good for studies. They're good for the little studies, color studies and, and playing around, but not, not for painting. So what do we use? Right now, there's a whole lot, just like there's a lot of different brands of pastel, there's a lot of different kinds of surfaces. You can even make your own, and I've done a lot of that in the past. But right now, I would say the most popular surfaces are sanded surfaces. And pastel artists actually used to work on sandpaper, um, but it wasn't archival. Now we have archival sanded paper. And two of my favorites are UART, U-A-R-T, which comes in a variety of grits, and I like the 320 grit. It's just right for me. And that's what I'm going to be working on today. This is a 11 by 14 mounted UART board. It's been mounted to an archival surface to make it nice and sturdy. Another surface that's really lovely is uh, called Pastel Premier. And it's a relatively new surface, and it comes in white, but it also comes in this lovely uh, kind of medium brown color. Uh, this is called Italian clay. And this is a wonderful surface uh, for when you don't want to do an underpainting. And uh, I did two portraits on this paper. Another surface that I particularly like, it's from France, and it's called Pastel Mat. And this is very different. It's very smooth. It has kind of a plush feel to it. 
And what's amazing is it's not like the sanded paper, but it holds the pastel better than any surface I've ever seen. So that's really interesting. So there's all these different pastels, and there's all these different surfaces. And uh, some years ago, when I was teaching at Montgomery College, I decided to write a book. Because uh, since there are so many different ways of working in pastel, um, there's lots of different styles that you can create. So I created this book um, called Finding Your Style in Pastel, and it's been highly acclaimed, and it's widely available on Amazon, or you can get it from me. So this is a good how-to book on pastel. All right. So let's get to today's demo. And you might be wondering what I am doing. I have a photograph here of a blue bowl with some red-orange pears and a white cloth on the blue cloth. And what I have done is the beginnings of an underpainting. And when I do an underpainting, I don't use the colors. Generally, I don't use the colors of the actual objects. Pastel is about layering and uh, building up different color. And by doing an underpainting, we can start with some, some opposing colors that won't mix and turn gray. So as I'm telling you this, I'm going to actually start doing my underpainting so that we can save time. I'm going to start with the, the bottom because it's lighter and it won't mud muddy up the alcohol. So I am using alcohol. I am using Walgreens. Uh, 93, 91% isopropyl alcohol. Always been a standard ingredient of mine, a standard thing. It dries immediately, really nice. Unfortunately, now it's hard to get to. So, uh, fortunately, I had a stash of it. Uh, you can use other kinds of solvents like Camsol, uh, denatured alcohol, if you can find that. You can even use water, but it just doesn't melt the pastel quite as nicely as just this alcohol does. And I'm just going to show you. This is what I'm talking about. All right. And I'm using a brush. I'm using a, use two different size brushes. And I really like um, a brand called Simply Simmons. They are acrylic bristle brushes, which I get at Plaza Art. And um, you do not want to use expensive oil or watercolor brushes because you are working on sanded paper and it will ruin these brushes. So these are great. These are not expensive and they're great for doing this kind of underpainting. So why, why am I doing this? Why do I want to do an underpainting? And why do I want to start with these really weird colors? Um, I don't always do this, but I would say in most of my landscapes, 90% of the time, I do an underpaint. I like the fact that what I can do is I am starting out with value shapes, and I am getting my composition fixed. So this is a value shape. This is a shadow, a cast shadow from this chair. This is what we call value shapes. Value is the lightness to darkness of a color, okay? and um, value is one of the most critical things for working successfully in pastel, because it's a dry medium, and if we want to layer appropriately, we layer from darker to lighter, and we can mix colors within the same value, and so uh, value is important. Now you might wonder about these colors. Why did I choose these colors? Well, let's just do the pears. The pears are basically red-orange. That is their color. And blue-green is the complement of red-orange. So I am using a cool blue-green. This is the complement. I don't always use the complement. In this case, it seemed like a good, a good choice. Um, I can let a little of that green show through, and uh, it might give me some vibration, some interesting things going on. So I'm just going to, because I could do this pretty quickly, and once I'm done, I'll be ready to start, because it will dry very quickly. 
Um, but I wanted you to see this because people don't understand the concept of painting. And here's something I should mention. I paint with pastel, okay? And people don't understand that. They say, no, 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 you're drawing. You're using a dry medium. You're using sticks. That's got to be drawing. No, I am painting. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Pastel Society of America has a definition of a pastel painting and a pastel drawing. And a pastel painting is one in which 80% or more of the paper is covered with pastel. Uh, a pastel drawing is where it is not covered. All right, so now I'm going to do this bowl. And so I've chosen the complement. With the bowl, it's a blue bowl, and I've chosen kind of a brownish, reddish brown color, which I think will go really nicely under the, uh, the blues and violets that I'm going to be putting on here. And you know, it really doesn't matter what color you use. You can use any color. As long as the value is correct, then you, you have a sense of where you're going. Um, I like to say that an underpainting is like a road map. Uh, it's a plan. I can see my composition. I've got the values set out. And then I can work over these other colors and build up the actual or the local color, as we call it. All right. So we've got this almost done. We've got to get the background done. The background is black. It's just black foam core that I put up. Uh, but we don't use black. I don't use black. I don't use pure white. I don't use pure gray. Never. Almost never. Did use some black for my black tuxedo cat once, but that's about it. So this is a combination of three colors. I've used some really, really dark blue. This uh, dark blue new pastel that I showed you. I've used a dark, cool green, and I've used some red. And those colors together are going to create a very nice dark, but it's not going to be completely black. And I might be able to just leave it or just lightly brush some other color on over it. I'm not going to worry too much about that background. I'm going to spend more of my time on the pears and the cloth and the bowl. All right. So we'll just try and get this on here. Um, while I'm doing this, I'm going to mention a couple things that people ask me a lot. Do I use a final fixative? Do I spray my work? No, I do not. Uh, if you use a really good sanded surface like this, any good pastel surface, it will hold the pastel. And you do not need to uh, um, spray it. And sometimes spraying can, and can turn blotchy. It can ruin your painting. There are workable fixatives that sometimes I've used uh, once in a while, but they really stink. And so you got to take them outside. You can't do it inside a studio. So I never, I don't teach you people to use that because we can't use it in the painting studio. So, um, so that's one thing. The other question I get is, do I blend with my hands? No, I don't do well. Yes, I do some of that. I do it to um, soften edges mainly. Sometimes you just want to soften an area, but you don't want to take your hands and blend like that. It will kill the pastel, because pastel is made out of little crystals of color. So now here is our underpainting. So you can see, it's still a little wet up there, but I can start working on the bowl and the pears, the cloth, and I'm just going to get this out of the way so I do not spill it. Okay. All right, so I think I'm going to begin with the bowl and just get in some color. Um, we have a nice deep shadow in here. So now I'm putting the blue on over this brown. And I might let a little of the brown show through. I'm using Giro. I'm going to start out primarily with Giro's. I, I tend not to go back to the hard pastels once I've done my underpainting. I really uh, prefer to use the um, 
little um, softer pastel than that. It's too light. I'm going to just get rid of that. Let's see. I'm going to go to something a little different, a little lighter, but maybe no. Try this. Still too light. I actually you know, got all of these out ahead of time so that I could figure this out. But that's all right. Back to here. This one. Now, this is the problem because I put light down and now I'm going dark over light. And that's not so good. Not so good. Much better light over dark. Okay. I mean, I really should probably brush that off, but I'm not going to do that right now. Um, we're going to put some, and this is not quite right either, this uh, drawing. Okay. Get that fixed, but. I'll wait for that for later. So I've got lighter color in here, and I'm going to add, and I'm seeing kind of a, um, kind of a reddish brown color in here. So I'm going to add a little bit of this color. I'm going to go back on over it with some blues. Maybe what I can do is just raise that a little bit. There, that's a little better. And that brings me to one of the things I love about pastel and the fact that it is so forgiving. You can correct pastel really easily. I mean, if it's really bad, I can take a brush and I can brush it off. But I can go on over it, I can put other colors into it. It, it is really one of the most forgiving of media. And that is always nice. So I've got a little bit of dark blue here. So we're just, we're just building up shapes here. We're just kind of getting into and, and now we have, on the bowl, we have these shapes, uh, which are, this is partially a uh, uh, shadow, I think, cast shadow from the uh, pear. And I'm seeing it as kind of a violet color, uh, maybe with some reddish brown in it as well. And as it gets over here, it turns bluer. And it gets darker. So I've got to get into a darker color on it. And this edge just kind of disappears into this dark background. And I think I forgot to put the alcohol on over here. Oops, let's just do that. Let's fix this. Okay. So, you know, we're just, uh, we're just kind of developing color here. Um, got some other, these are the colors I thought about using. That's a really nice blue-green. Now these are the terry, these are uh, a uh, bigger, fatter, softer pastel. These are Terry Ludwig pastels. Okay. They're made in Colorado uh, by Terry and his son, who's now taken over the business. And uh, these are wonderful pastels. These are really popular in the US. A lot of people really like the Terry Ludwigs. So they're very popular. And they're big. And so they last, they last quite a long time. So, let's go put in some color here and see how it looks. I'm not gonna worry about highlights or any of that right now. Just gotta get in kind of the right value, kind of the right color. 
going to put in this blue, which is darker, and then I'm going to go lighter on over it. I just want to keep the difference, the distinction there between the two. So let's go to something a little bit lighter. And then I'm seeing that right where this pear is hitting, it's actually darker. I've got to get that in there. It's really dark. Right here where this pear is leaning up against the bowl. But down here where we have the white cloth reflecting on the bowl, uh, and I might need to redraw this area because I've kind of lost the edge of my bowl, I think. I think that's it right there, okay. So I'm just gonna start out with this light blue, but I'm gonna go to something even lighter. Uh, but for right now, that will kind of hold the spot. And this is kind of an interesting shape. It's down that, put some more of this dark blue. That's all nicely dried now. So I can just I can just put this blue on here. I can let that edge kind of go off into the um, the nice dark underpainting. There we go. A little bit darker. So this is a this is all a beginning. Um, I want to put a little bit of um, let's do it right a magenta into this warmer reddish color. It's really amazing the different colors you can see in in the. Uh, Still like, and that's one of the really fun things about doing it. And my students have made it clear they want me to continue doing some still life in the winter when I start teaching again. Right now I'm teaching an eight week session and I've got three classes and I'm doing the same class three days in a row because I had pre-recorded all of the, uh, the videos and done PowerPoint lectures and it's all worked out really nicely. So now this is too red, and it's a blue bowl. So I'm just going to put some blue on over this. I'm going to soften these edges a little bit. Um, so I don't know that this is straight. I think I've got to get a sense of where this bowl is coming here. Maybe like that. I did redraw it several times. Okay, that's good. All right, let's get on with the, let's do something with the pairs before we go too much further. Um, so we have three pairs for the shadowed side and a warmer side. And for the shadowed side, I'm going to start them out with the cool red, magenta. Um, I'll put some warmer red on over it. But this is a good way of saying that this red is in shadow. And this is using color temperature. And I'm just going to start out with the the shadowed areas of my pairs, and I can go a little bit darker in this one. I think this this edge is even a little darker. And I can let some of this green show through. So when I have something like this, which is really bright, really bright, these pears are red-orange. You can't get too much brighter than that. I like to start darker and duller. I like to start out with cooler color. 
darker and cooler color that will then make that red really sing. And I could even put some blue into this because there is so much blue around these pairs. Okay, a little darker one. And I see this edge is being pretty dark. When you have a still life, you really want the colors to work together. You want the colors to come around, okay? So, I started out with a magenta. Now I'm going to go to uh, a variety of uh, reds and oranges. And, and these are much brighter, higher chroma colors. Higher chroma. Um, really red. You can see that. orangey color. This is where the light is. So what I'm doing is I'm defining the, the light and the shadow on this pair, not just with value, lighter and darker, but also with temperature by going to the warmer color over here and the cooler color over there. It says that's in shadow, this is in light. And that's one of the things we've been doing this semester is focusing on color, color projects, and the importance of all of uh, understanding color theory and how it works and how you can use it, make use of it in your paintings. So, I mean, these, these pairs are really beautiful because they've got a lot of different qualities to them. I and mean, it's not just one color, this oranges and reds and uh, yellow greens, you know, there's yellow greens in here. It's just some really nice, uh, this is the probably the reddest one of them. And I'm gonna go to something a little cooler, darker, softer. This is a, well, this is a real red. This is a Schmanke pastel from Germany, really soft. And, uh, but I still want, I still want a little violet in here and see. This magenta color, I'm just seeing this darker area. Um, and I might just find a lighter orange. Want this this is an important edge, a really important edge here. It's coming out up against that dark. Okay. So let's work over here. This one has more yellow, yellow green in it. It's got some different colors going on. And definitely some uh, darker, darker colors under here. Now I could go to green. I could go to, uh, let's just try. No, that's too light. That's too light. My problem is that my favorite, my blue green is one of my favorite colors and I tend to use it up particularly the darker values, so it's pretty hard to keep some of my colors. I keep using them. But I like the green in here. The green is really nice, and I'm going to put some of that in there over here, too. Because that green is the complement. It's the blue-green. It's the complement of red-orange. It's what's underneath, as we see. Okay, so over here, we'll just start out with something lighter. And then I'm going to go with something warmer. Here's some yellow green. There's a lot of yellow green in here. Some 
go red down here. Oops. So I'm using strokes that try to um, mimic the shape of the pear. And I need to um, get this. Some guy here. Some guy there. So we've got uh, getting there, and we can do a little bit more with this, this shape here. It's kind of a foreshortened pair. Because he's coming straight at us. And I can use a little bit of uh, Highlight there. Let's just put a little more red in here. And now here's here's the thing. We have an edge here. We have this edge and this edge, and I can't see these edges right now. So this pair is not dark enough. It's just not dark enough. This pair in the back is not dark enough. I've got to darken this so that I can see that edge. I'm going to put some magenta into it. It's going to be cooler, a little darker. It's even darker down there. I'll just go to the blue because it's the darkest thing I've got right now. And I can go to that green that I used, mix some of that in there. Now I can go back to the edge of this pair with a, with a real orangey color. And now that's standing out. That's standing out. That's better. So, let's work on a shadow. Let's work on a shadow. Shadows are really important to still life. Uh, it's important you get the value of them right. People tend to put shadows on light cloths too dark. I'm just putting in some, some dark little underside pieces. Now, one of the things I really like to do with a shadow is to mix colors. I like to mix the colors in the shadows. And so I'm going to be using a combination. I'm going to start out with the violet because it's kind of the color I'm seeing. And I haven't done anything with this clock. This is going to get lighter, okay? So I'm, what we're going to do is we're just going to, to begin with, work on this shadow. And this has to be a little darker in here. I just put some magenta in. I'm just going to put some magenta into this lighter magenta there. I'm going to add some green into it so that we have a, an opposite color. And then I'm going to put some warm color, some orange in, because I'm seeing some reflection of that color in here. So that our shadow is not just one thing. 
Now it would help if we knew what this was going to be, this cloth. And I'm going to start this out, not going to go as light as it will be, and I'm going to start it out with this kind of bluish green. And right away you can see how light this looks in comparison to all of that, okay? So if we do that, we can see right away we've got some light going on here. And this can get much lighter, but for right now it's enough. It's enough to set off our shadows. Let us see what we've got. And I'm going to put that in over here so I can establish these light pieces. The other thing I think I want to do is establish the color of the cloth. They're just little pieces of this cloth, but it's a really important part of the color scheme. Okay. So having this cloth in here, this color is important because I think it looks beautiful with this red orange. I may need to, that bowl looks pretty screwy. I may need to adjust that, but for right now, I'll just focus on the colors here. And I'm just going to get this blue in. I've got a little triangle of it down here. So we have this really kind of nice color that helps lead the eye up into the picture. And that's an important compositional element. So let's just uh, let get this enough of this color on here so that we've got a sense of the cloth. All right. So now we have these shadows, and I think we're going to have to do a little more uh, work with compliments. Put some more green in. Just clean this up. Actually, I didn't get, get that in the right place. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna reshape this shadow, and I'm gonna put this in here. Okay. And now we have this shadow. And the shadows are not the same value everywhere. They, they're darker under the pairs. Um, they get a little lighter as they go out. So there's some more light in over here. So what I'm doing here is I'm mixing, I'm mixing pastels, I'm mixing various colors of pastel. And uh, this one's a little darker. But what happens is you create a, a nice grade color. It is not just one thing. I'm mixing warm and cool colors. I don't have this uh, hair really well defined down here. It's got to get a little darker. Darker on the bottom. Darker, cooler on the bottom, I think. So let's just bring some of this into here. And there's got to be a sense of some dark under here. Okay. 
We'll just make this a little darker. More of this green, which is the complement. And then some orange. Okay, let's just do the other pair. And this one's got um, a lot of yellow green on this side. Some yellow green underneath. And then some of this, a uh, lot of you know, red orange coming out of it. These are beautiful pears. I hated to eat them. And I'm going to go to something a little uh, a little cooler red. Not quite the magenta, but a little bit. More of a real red. And we want this edge to just kind of go off. You know, this the edge of this pair is not all that important, but the edge of that one is. And so we'll do a little more with that. Um, let me go back to the yellow green. And then we'll bring some orange into this. It's, it's not just a solid yellow green, so we'll just bring some orange in. And Maybe some lighter, maybe some softer, some softer pastel. Here's one with more yellow in it. Look down, this is very soft. You can see how much pastel is coming down because of that. So then I can go back to this Jura, which is not that soft, and I can just kind of mush around this color a little bit so that it sits in here. Uh, more nicely. Okay. And we're going to get a little stem on this guy. And more color on him. More roundness. So I, I, I was using more of a little bit more of a reddish one. Now I'm using a little more orangey. I'm going to put a little more yellow green in over here, trying to kind of get the sense of this pair, which has a lot of different color going on. But this side is in the shadow, and so this is going to be a little darker over here. Maybe we're going to maybe play with. Let's see. I don't know. This is a darker green, maybe. Some of this green in here would be good. And I feel like I need to break up this area with some yellow green. It's too much. All right. And so now we'll do the shadow. Let's go back and do the shadow under this guy. And we have a nice little hook here. So I'm just starting it out with the violet. And I want to kind of just to find that a little bit better. Um, I'm not happy. 
happy with the shape of this pair. It needs to come out a little bit, be a little rounder. Let's go to, um, let's go to a darker violet here. this because I don't think this bowl looks very good. No, it does not. It looks really, really lopsided. So I'm going to just get that, that edge over there. And just bring that on over. Looks better. It's better. Um, I'll bring this down a little bit more here. I'm really not happy with the shape of this. I think it needs to come down more here because right, that's going to be light. So I better go back on over that. Let's just put some of the color of the cloth that I used into that. I'm just going to use this one blue for this cloth. I like this color. But I think maybe I'll introduce some of that blue into the bowl. Okay, that could be nice. And um, why don't we just put in a little highlight up here. And let's look at um, some of the light that's on this bowl. I mean, it's really quite nice. There's lots of stuff going on with this, and it's uh, kind of tricky. And, and one of the things I didn't mention was that I've got these little things with my uh, plastic with my uh, pastel in them, and they're sitting in cornmeal. And I use cornmeal boxes for two reasons. One is that it helps me identify my palette of the actual paint, you know, um, pastels that I'm using. The other thing is it does is that if I shake the box, it cleans them because your hands get really dirty and they get all over there and the fat cell picks up dirt from on here. And so this cleans it. This, this is really nice. So cornmeal is my uh, choice for this. And I'm going to get a little bit of a pinky color here uh, for this. Some people use rice. I don't feel that it works very well. I like cornmeal. Okay, so this is this bowl is fairly rough. Now, what happens if I do a little of this? Let's just try. Let's see what happens if I do a little bit of blending. So just so you can see. All right. Well, that's not too bad. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing reflection of this pair up in here. So I'm going to put some yellow in here and then of course I've already see, I'm seeing the red here but I've already got that in there so what I want to do now is I want to bring down the color of the cloth a little bit and I've left a lot of that underpainting shine. 
So I've got to really do something with this cloth. And so I'm putting a yellow on over here. You can see the difference. We thought that that blue was light, but now you can really see the difference. And if I play with this yellow, I can use that to kind of set off my composition. And I haven't talked about the center of interest. What is the most important part of this? And I kind of consider it to be this pair right here, or these two pairs together. Um, so, uh, and I need to have another shadow back here. So I can use the yellow on the cloth and the light on the cloth to kind of uh, help indicate where I want the eye to go. So I need to have, I need to do a little bit more work on this pair if he's so important. And I haven't gotten, I haven't quite gotten him down to where I want him. Let's try, this is more of a pink. And well, let's try a lighter orange. And I'm doing softer pastels now. yellow. Let's just see if that gives a little more interest to this. Now you notice I haven't done anything with the background and I'm going to have to. But for right now, I'm going to fill in this a little bit more. to something like this to begin with. This is more of a bluish color rather than that yellow. Cooler, cooler white. seeing all kinds of interesting colors reflecting. But I, I want to keep it kind of, kind of loose. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the background. I'm probably just going to put something there, but no, I think I'm going to leave it. And I think that um, this might be, this just might be enough for this demo which gives you some idea of how to build up color in a pastel painting. Just going to put a little, keep seeing more possibilities here. Notice all the different colors I've used. It's a little too much. Just put your finger on there. So, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I might do a little more work on it, and uh, we'll see the final painting at the end of the video. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Bye. Stay well.